In today's show, we're going to help Windows 7 and Windows 8 PowerShell users up their game. We're going to install the Windows Management Framework 5.1 to get your version of PowerShell up to 5 and get all the latest features there. And then we're going to install PS Readline, which will enable you to kind of get some of that color formatting and syntax you've seen on some of the other videos and people have asked about. So today we're going to talk about how to get that for you, even though you're running Windows 7 or Windows 8. Should be fun, should be fast, but first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to dive in and help those of you out there using Windows 7 and Windows 8. On my uh, PowerShell for Beginners video, which is linked about over here somewhere, I get lots of different questions from people about, hey, how come my PowerShell doesn't look like yours? Why don't I get all this pretty color formats and things like that when I do commands and parameters and things like that? Well, the good news is, is after a little bit of research, I found out that the answer has actually been available all along. I just had no idea. So I had to learn a little something and now I'm gonna help you guys uh, by showing you how to do it. So here we are on my desktop. This is a Windows 8.1 machine uh, that I installed just for this exercise. I do it as a VM because quite frankly, PowerShell can get really mad and if you're doing PowerShell on your local machine and trying to record at the same time, bad things can happen. So I do it on a VM so that way if the VM gets mad, well, the VM's mad, but it's not affecting the local machine. Anyway, you probably don't care. So the first thing we're gonna do here is hit the start button and we're going to type in PowerShell and we're going to right click over here on Windows PowerShell and say run as administrator. So we talked about in other videos, we won't rehash it here, but pretty much never a case where you don't want to run PowerShell as administrator as best I know. But so here I have PowerShell open and a couple of things that we want to look at here. So first thing we want to talk about is um, figuring out what version we're on. But we do know before we do anything, best thing you can do is do start as transcript. Right, so I type in tar trans, hit tab, there it is finished, and press enter. So that just gives me a running list of everything that I did here, right? So it's writing it to that text file, everything you do in this session, and everything that um, is output to the screen. This is a really good idea every single time you start PowerShell, even when you do quick things like this. Okay, so now with that update, what we'll do is we'll go in here to properties, and we'll make a couple of quick changes to make PowerShell easier for you to read um, as we're working together here. So I'm gonna go to the font tab, I'm going to switch to consolas and I'm going to do 28. Um, I don't need to mess with layout or colors for what we're going to do here, but feel free to edit those as you might need. Another thing we'll look at here is options. You always want to make sure quick edit mode is available. That allows you to do the uh, right click for copy and the right click for paste type of stuff. So click OK. So that makes our window a little bigger. Hopefully it makes it easier for you at home to read. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to type in dollar sign PS version table, right? So by hitting tab, you were able to get that. So we'll press enter. And we can see that currently my PowerShell version is 4.0. So kind of updated, but right, depending on if you're Windows 7, Windows 8, where you're at, how many updates you've done, you might have different values here. If you have anything less than Windows 5.1, then you need to kind of follow along the next steps because we're gonna get ourselves all the way updated before we put the PS read line on. The first thing I wanna do before I try and update this is I'm actually gonna type in here, get execution policy, because one other thing that I need you guys to check. And you can see that by default on this Windows 8.1 machine, the execution policy is set to restricted, which doesn't allow any remote scripts uh, to run and process. And unfortunately, when we pull the PS line stuff down, it's gonna require the update. So what I want you to do, I want you to type set execution policy, right? With using your tab complete. And then we're going to change this to remote signed, right? Tab complete works for that also and hit enter. And so say, hey, you really want to do it. Do you really trust that Shane guy? Well, that's up to you. But I can tell you that uh, most systems, the later versions, I should say, it's like my Windows 10 machine, it came out of the box with uh, remote signed, I do believe. I know that Windows Server 2012 R2 did. Uh, so different versions of PowerShell by default have different settings here, but remote signed is probably the most restricted one you can use that'll actually allow you to run remote scripts. So if you install Azure, uh, the Azure PowerShell, the Office 365 PowerShell, any of that type of stuff is going to require your remote policy to be changed. So I went ahead and changed mine. So we're going to clear the screen. And with that done, now what we want to do is we actually want to get out of PowerShell. So I'm going to say exit. And I'm going to open up our good friend uh, Internet Explorer. And we'll stop that, right? Because we don't need to see the power, the uh, MSN news of the day to load. Well, it loaded anyway. So I'm gonna hit enter and we'll expand this so you can see it a little better. But here you can see I've, the URL is down in the uh, description if you need it. 
But here is the Windows Management Framework 5.1 download. So I'm going to hit download here. And you're going to see there's different versions, whether you're using Windows 2012, Windows 7. Uh, and with Windows 7 and Windows 8, it's whether or not you're using 64-bit or 32-bit. So the same down here. I'm using Windows 8, and I want the 64-bit one. So I'm going to check this box right here. Uh, on your machine, you probably have both 32-bit and 64-bit PowerShell. For the most part, 32-bit PowerShell, everything has been deprecated. I'm sure there's exceptions to the rules, but all the things that I use, all the tools I use are all 64-bit PowerShell. So I only uh, update the 64-bit PowerShell. But if you have a reason to do the 32-bit, by all means, have at it. So I'm going to hit next here. And so then we'll be prompted for the download. It's like, hey, do you want to open it or save it? I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, and about after two minutes, this download and security scan finished. I don't know why my machine took all that time to security scan it, but it did. The good news is I can edit that out so you guys didn't have to wait two minutes. Just me. All right, so now that that's done, I'll go ahead and close my browser. And then I'll hit the folder icon here. I'll go to my downloads folder. And right here, you can see I've got it downloaded. I've got it downloaded twice because I did this earlier. I actually practiced ahead of time. So double click. We'll say open. Okay, so now it's ready. It's like, hey, you really want to install this update? Say yes. I do not know why. My machine is really slow today. I think it wants me to watch cat videos instead of sitting here to do this, but I'm going to power through it. So hopefully you don't have to watch cat videos. All right, so read the license terms. Yep, I agreed all those things. Why not? I say accept. And so now the install is going to begin. This is going to take about three minutes on my slow machine. So I'll go ahead and show off my editing skills and cut all that out. And um, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so after about three minutes or so, once again, on my very slow machine, so yours should go faster, you can see that it wants to reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and let it reboot. Um, I found on some machines you don't have to reboot, some you do, so we'll see. All right, I'll hit pause, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I got through the reboot. Uh, a couple things to consider before you continue on. First off, if you watched any good videos while you were waiting on yours to install, definitely put them down at the bottom below, right? So whether it's cat videos, dog videos, any type of funny stuff, I appreciate it. It gives me something to look forward to in the comments. Secondly, um, after you finish the install, you'll notice your machine's a little sluggish, right? Because remember, the Windows Management Framework isn't just installing a new PowerShell EXE. It's making a lot of changes across your system. So I actually, after I got uh, booted back in, I logged in, I probably waited about a minute to a minute and a half for the disk I.O. to go from 100% CPU or 100% PEG that it was down to a more manageable number of 0% because it kind of needed to finish installing all those nooks and crannies. So if your machine's a little slow or sluggish right now, go ahead and give it a second to catch its breath and then it'll get it back to normal. Um, and if you're wondering the Windows Management Framework, so it got us PowerShell 5, which is what we were after, but it also does things like it improves desired state configuration, it makes some updates to the PowerShell uh, Git options and things like that, whole bunch of things. And they're all listed on that download page that I sent you to earlier. But just want to make sure you kind of knew there are some upsides to uh, putting this stuff on besides just making Shane happy. So, okay. So now that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to hit start. We're going to type in PowerShell again. There it is. We're going to right click on it and we're going to say run as administrator. A lot of people update their shortcut to always just say uh, run as administrator every time so they don't have to remember to right click. I was too lazy to do that because I don't know, I'm a bad person. Um, you can also see that it forgot my uh, PowerShell font settings. Very rude. I believe they stick this time. So we'll say font, and then we'll go down here to consoles, back to 28, and say okay. All right, and the reason it forgot them was because it just uploaded all the new PowerShell stuff, and so it reset itself back to the default config. So that's the reason it didn't actually forget them. It overwrote them. But if we do dollar sign PS version table again here, we hit enter, we can see now that our PS version was 4.0, or maybe even 3 or 2, depending on what version of Windows you're using, is now 5.1. Yeah, we've kicked some butt. All right, other thing I forgot to do, you guys should have yelled at me, somebody should have stopped me, right? Start transcript, hit enter, right? Just to keep us honest in case I mess up anything, I've got this history of everything I did. So we'll clear off our screen. And so now it's in time to um, install the PS read line, right? Because right now if we do something like get module, right? There's no color coding, nothing like that. If we do a bar, we know that it's open. Uh, you know, if we do for each object, for each object, and then a little parentheses, uh, we'll do this, just write host, write dash host, dollar sign, or the, hello, very technical stuff, right? If we were to hit enter now, it's like, hey, it just gives me the prompt, it knows we didn't finish, right? Oh, and then enter again, 
hello, yay. It works, everything works still, but there's no formatting, there's no colors, and that's really what a lot of you are after. So in order to get that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in install dash module, and we're gonna do ps read line, just like that. So ps r e a d l i n e, hit enter. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna say, well, I don't have that here, but it's out there in the PowerShell gallery, right? So it knows about the PowerShell gallery built in. And so in a second, it's gonna prompt us to install um, the package getter, right? That's called uh, PowerShell get. And so in order to do that, it's like, hey, do you wanna do this thing? Well, yes, I do. I need the latest and greatest of that. So I'm gonna hit Y. And so that's gonna download the um, package provider and you get and put that on our system. So then after about 30 seconds or so, it's gonna say, well, you know, so you told me to get PS read line. Well, it's out there in this repository called the PS gallery. Even though I know about it, I don't know if it's really a trusted repository. How do you feel about it? And by default, it's gonna say, no, don't install that, it's an untrusted repository. Well, between you and me, it's a safe repository. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say why and hit enter, right? Because it's actually ran by Microsoft. And if PS read line, right, you're like, hey, what is this hack that Shane's has us installing? This is actually um, a native uh, install in Windows 10, right? So if you have Windows 10, you open PowerShell, PS Readline's already there. They just didn't have a good way to go put it back on Windows 8, Windows 7. So you're not installing some third-party weirdo add-in that Shane made up or you know some guys in some corner of the internet did. This is not dark web stuff. This is just Microsoft utilities that is, uh, needs to be deployed for you manually because you didn't have it to begin with. But boom, just like that, the install was done. So we're in good shape. So what I'm gonna do, just to kind of show the difference, I'm gonna hit start over here again, Power PowerShell there, and then we're gonna say right click, we're gonna say run as administrator, yes again. And so then now when this loads, it's automatically going to have the PS read line put in for me. So if we type the same line we did earlier, right? Remember we did the get module for each object? So if we type in get module now, look at that, nice pretty color coding. When I hit the, pipe, notice that right here, this little icon, or uh, cursor, I guess, I don't know what to call this little guy, he turned red, and so if we space, and then we do for each object, right, it turned off a red because I've given it a command, doesn't know if it's a good one or not, but, but then when I open the brackets again, it turns red because it knows I need to close them out, so we'll say write dash host, and hello, oh, look at that, things in parentheses are now color coded, and then if I close it out, we get rid of the red, and we hit enter, and just like that, we've now got it written to the screen. So this is a big change, right? This is, uh, we talked about earlier, I've got that beginning PowerShell video, and the number one comment I've gotten in there is, how do I get my PowerShell to look like this? Well, there you go, we'll get you the Windows Management Framework 5.1, we'll put PS read line on, and now you've got the nice color formatting that'll make it easier for you to read and write and go through that. Also, if you're a more advanced PowerShell user and you're just discovering this, there is a whole bunch of stuff. I'd encourage you to go out there to search, you know, Bing for PS uh, Readline, and there is all the documentation. You can do custom functions. There's a lot of fancy things it can do with like control tab and control spaces and control arrows, and there's a lot of shortcuts that are built into it that I've never really used um, because I just take it all for granted that it's there, but something for you to go and explore if that is, you know, you're the more in-depth type of person. Um, so hopefully this helps you get going with PowerShell a little easier. The next video I think in the series is going to be how to get things out of PowerShell. So we're going to talk about like copying, using the clipboard and out the files and things like that. So that should be exciting. There's already the beginning video. There is the uh, how to install it for Azure, how to install it for uh, Office 365, how to work with SharePoint list, how to work with SharePoint online list how to manipulate objects. So lots of different PowerShell videos. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Check them out today. And if you need any help, right, you can always hit me up in the comments below. You can tweet me, at Shane's Cows. Or if you need a little more of the professional help that's better than me uh, responding in my pajamas, good old bold zebras. You know, we do a lot of PowerShell consulting engagements where we write some really cool stuff for people who are trying to automate tasks. So thanks and have a great day.